Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I just want to do this video today as a reminder to people to be aware of your surroundings at all times. Hopefully this video just puts you back into a more vigilant mode when you're out there doing your thing. And if I can prevent one tragedy with this video, then it's well worth it. So let's get to it. Situational awareness is just having a general sense of your surroundings and the potential threats within the environment, particularly in a public situation where there are many other social actors present. There's a cognitive component to it, and there's also a street smarts component to it. I'm going to link to an article below in the description written by a former Secret Service agent who gives a lots of great tips on how to survive an active gunman scenario. I don't think there's anybody who relies on situational awareness more than a Secret Service agent who has to constantly surveil very large crowds of people and be trying to figure out those anomalies in the crowd in order to keep their people safe. I'm also going to post a link on the Art of Manliness website where they talk about uh, the OODA loop which is a system which was developed in order to help people deal with uh, situations where they needed to be more aware and to respond accordingly. Now we can go into great depth about the information processing or the sensory perceptual aspect of uh, situational awareness, but there's plenty of research papers on that. I'll link one in the description, which you can investigate for yourself. But I think 90% of what's going to work is just having a general awareness of your surroundings and having good observational skills. As the world around us becomes more automated, it's our natural inclination to relinquish some of our responsibilities for personal safety to this technological apparatus that we've created. There's a reason why other animals and why we used to have such sensory acuity because our lives really depended on it. We required excellent visual acuity. We required excellent auditory skills, the, the ability to hear a branch breaking off in the distance. We needed a good sense of smell. All of those things nowadays are really things that we don't even need anymore. Our society is pretty much set up so that a person who is blind uh, in a wheelchair and deaf can get through life without too many problems and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody who's suffering from those disabilities. I'm just using that as an example to demonstrate how non-situationally aware you have to be to exist and in many ways we are actually penalized for being situationally aware whether that's through social ridicule or by just performing less efficiently in our daily tasks because so much of our attention is commanded by things which don't involve our immediate survival. So the world we live in today is interestingly contrasted. On the one hand, it's incredibly safe. It's nanny state level safe. Our environments get more and more protected by the year. There is better uh, emergency protocols. There's better uh, preventative measures that are taken, whether it's a construction zone, which is highly regulated and held to a standard to do certain things to ensure the public safety, or whether that means putting barriers along sidewalks to prevent uh, reckless drivers or people who are intentionally trying to use their cars as weapons, which is something that we see more and more. But whether it's uh, terrorist activity, uh, just a criminal activity, mental health related, or even just somebody who's distracted in what they're doing and not paying attention. Maybe they're on the road. I know Massachusetts Prepper posted a video recently where some guy was just on his phone texting and ended up uh, running into a couple pedestrians who are just walking on the sidewalk. So these things can happen. And what tends to happen is we get rather complacent in our everyday hustle. And in a sense, in order to maximize your efficiency in whatever you're doing, if you're running errands or if you're working, it really will serve the task of whatever it is you're pursuing to not be looking over your shoulder and constantly surveying the area every five minutes to make sure that you're not gonna be a victim of some intentional or unintentional incident. Not a very good use of your time perhaps, but an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And if it means preventing the loss of life or limb, then it's well worth it to be more aware of the environment. Be Just gotta make a quick comment on cell phones. Uh, there's a lot of prank videos on the web right now. There was one recently, this guy goes around and he puts cheeseburgers on people's heads 
while they're on their cell phones. It's actually kind of hilarious if you want to kill some time and uh, probably lose a few brain cells in the process. There's another video series where they find parents who are with their children in their playgrounds and the parents are on their phone and the camera crew or whatever will try to lure the kid away with promise of treats or something like that. And uh, the person, you know, starts looking for the kid once they finally broken out of the trance of their smartphone. And of course, they're quickly uh, told that, you know, we could have kidnapped your child because you weren't paying attention. So definitely cell phones have contributed to our diminished sense of situational awareness. So you have a lot of very distracted people walking around, running into signs, you know, walking out into traffic doing the craziest things, totally unaware of their surroundings and totally reliant on the goodwill of other people and the attention of other people and the security systems that are in place, be they the surveillance grid or whatnot, to actually protect them from crime so that they don't become victims. But I would say that if you were going to bust out your phone in a public place, do a quick 360 before you do that. Uh, just because all it takes is a few seconds of you being distracted and very consumed for you to miss a lot of what is going on uh, in the environment. There's another video on YouTube that I'm going to post in the description and it's all about how you don't see things if you're not looking for that particular thing. I'm not going to spoil the video but uh, definitely check out that one as well. It's amazing what we don't see if we're not looking for it. Because what happens with most individuals, especially in the context of a larger group, if you're in a crowd or something to that effect, is we tend to offload a lot of the responsibility for our safety to the environmental protections that are in place or into other people like security guards, police officers, emergency services, uh, just employees of whatever establishment we are in. We presume that they are our caregivers in a sense. So when you go into a restaurant, you know, they seat you down, you're a patron in their establishment. And because you are very directed in the transaction, you know, they come and they take you to your seat. They basically cater to you. And then of course they bring you the bill and then you leave. So there's this tacit acceptance that you are under their supervision temporarily. And thus, in that situation, we tend to let a lot of our guards down, but that's the last thing you want to do in any situation. It's very much like a child who thinks that, you know, the teddy bear is going to keep them safe from the bad guys. Like the idea that a 110, 120 pound waitress is going to somehow be able to keep you safe in that establishment. Maybe not, you know, physically, but there's still this assumption that she is aware of what's going on in the environment. So we presume that those people are aware. But if you've worked anywhere, you can probably attest to the fact that, you know, you don't have as much control over the situation as a lot of people would think you do. So it's very important that you don't succumb to this groupthink type mentality. Another great example of this is that I live in a subdivision in which people are fairly carefree when it comes to protecting their own homes. Some people won't even turn their lights on at night outside. And this may make a person almost feel weird about doing that regardless. Some people will leave their houses unlocked and there's this general sense of trust which permeates our community. It's very important, however, that you do what you feel is in the best interest of you and your own family, regardless of what other people are doing. And it's very easy to buckle to the social pressure, even if it's not an overt social pressure where you have people actually telling you that, oh, you know, you shouldn't be so paranoid and this, that, and whatever. Sometimes it can be just a very subtle, passive aggressive comment that a neighbor might make about how, you know, they never lock their doors because, you know, they never feel the need to. And there may be a general sense from some people that you're being vigilant is not conducive to this community of trust that they're trying to build. Regardless, it's important for you to, to trust your intuition about different situations. You know, if you are going into any establishment, be it uh, a gym, for instance, I've been thinking about this a lot, you know, in going to the gym, how people are incredibly vulnerable in fitness facilities because, you know, you're basically, lots of people are wearing shorts and gym shoes. And even though you have a lot of very physically 
fit people there. Uh, just nobody would ever expect for, say, some sort of active gunman scenario to ensue in there, which is why I've always wondered, you know, when that's going to happen. It's going to happen somewhere at some point. I mean, we've seen it happen in nightclubs, um, concerts, things of that nature, places where large groups of people tend to congregate, like schools, universities, uh, outdoor festivals, things of that nature. So it's only a matter of time, I think, before something happens in a place like that. So, you know, it's important that whenever you go into any of these establishments, the first thing you should do is know where all the exits are. And sometimes the exits are hidden. Usually there's always emergency exits uh, throughout the building that not a lot of people are aware of. That's why everybody is gonna rush the main doors if something ever does pop off. And of course, those are gonna be congested and some people are gonna get trampled, some people are gonna lose their lives. So it's very important that you know where all the emergency exits are. Chances are there's an emergency exit even in the washer if it's a, a big enough facility. If it's a place that you go frequently, a restaurant or what have you, uh, you're well within your rights to request an evacuation diagram for that facility. They might not give you an actual copy of it, but they should be able to show you a fire escape uh, display diagram. That should give you a good basic layout of the building that you're in. Because many of us frequent the same establishments over and over, whether it's a coffee shop, a restaurant, a shopping mall, if you are going to be going into a place where you're going to be seated for a long time, like a movie theater, it's very tempting to want to go for the best seats in the house. But just be mindful of the fact that usually the best seats in the house are the ones which are furthest away from the exits. or the, They're the ones that are furthest in. So like say like if you're courtside at an NBA game, um, you're going to be the farthest from an exit compared to somebody who had really crappy seats you know, and we're right by the exit. So obviously you still want to live, you still want to take risks, but just be mindful of those things that if you go into a restaurant and you want to sit in a nice booth in the back section or something like that, then you're going to be far from an exit and hopefully you're positioning yourself in such a way that you have a good view of the situation. So whenever I go into a restaurant to eat, I always try to position myself so I can see everything that's going on in the restaurant and still have a pretty quick way to get out if need be. Now, I'm not saying in every situation you're gonna wanna turn tail and run, but especially if you live in a place which permits concealed carry and you are trained to use those devices, then of course you're gonna have a lot more options with how you can respond. But for a lot of people in many countries who cannot be in possession of that form of uh, personal protective equipment, you're putting yourself in danger and potentially a lot of other people if you're gonna make a move on somebody and there's not a high degree of predictability that what you're doing is gonna be successful. I mean, things can just happen anywhere. They can happen when you're driving, they can happen if you're going into a convenience store late at night and somebody happens to uh, try to rob the store while you're in the store. Uh, just walking down the street late at night or even in broad daylight, things can happen. You know, you got to always be constantly surveying your area, whether you're in a shopping center like a place like Costco or going to pick up your kids from school. It's always good to make sure you provide the space for a way out of any situation and you don't get caught up in the herd mentality. And the tragedy is, is that it only takes a few seconds to be cognizant of the fact that something might happen wherever you are at any given time. And simply having that understanding in your mind puts you many, many steps ahead because now you're already thinking about uh, manners of egress out of the situation so that should that situation arise it's not going to catch you off guard when you're full of adrenaline and you just get carried away with whatever herd behavior is happening in that moment simply taking a few seconds to do it if then heuristic in your head as to if this happens what would i do whenever you go somewhere taking a general stock of the people in the environment etc could mean the difference between you reacting in a way which is going to be detrimental to your health or responding in such a way that's going to lend to you not being a statistic so when you enter a shopping mall or a school just being aware of people having a vague sense of everyone you pass it doesn't mean you have to entirely survey 
every single thing about every person you pass because this is going to be impossible if you're walking down something like Times Square. You're never even going to be able to survey one one hundredth of the amount of specific details of every particular person that you come across. It's just going to be impossible. So what you would do under those circumstances is employ a, a technique called wide angle vision, where you're basically keeping your perceptual span broader, you're keeping it open, you're not really focusing in on any particular thing. You're just trying to have an awareness of whatever anomalies there are in the environment. Sometimes those are going to jump out at you, sometimes they aren't. Usually any sort of suspicious behavior, anything which is unnatural is going to stand out in your perception, but you're only going to be able to see it if you have that broad perceptual span. If you're focusing on the right hand, you're not going to see what the left hand is doing. So if you're focusing on what one person is doing who you think is looks suspicious and only that person, then that leaves a variety of other potential suspicious suspects out there in the world of things. So while some generalizations about human behavior and the culture that you're in can be helpful in terms of accurately observing the mannerisms and the personalities of different types of people in the environment, it's important that you don't let stereotypes get in the way of your observations because oftentimes those preconceived notions about people are actually going to throw you off the scent so to speak and you may miss some of the more subtle indicators of that person's capabilities and their personality because it's being overshadowed by your stereotypical perception of that person. I'm not suggesting that you have to be looking over your shoulder at any given moment and in fact uh, I don't do this enough. I would venture to say that most people even prepper survivalists we all get complacent we all get forgetful when we're out there on the grind you know and even something as simple as being stuck in a drive-through parking lot with 15 cars behind you and 10 in front of you and there's some you know maniac doing something to one of the cars up ahead i mean that's something which could potentially happen so you, you put yourself in a vulnerable situation so you know, things like elevators, things like like those long lineups where you're basically gridlocked. The same principle with regards to driving defensively. You may be doing everything right that you're supposed to be doing on the road, but all it takes is for one person to be distracted in their driving and accidentally swerve into you, and that's it. So, you know, to avoid those situations, you have to be a bit more uh, proactive about your projection. Having that awareness is crucial, not in a paranoid sense, but in a sense that just makes sense. And the fact is, you are going to be the only one doing this, probably, unless there's people who, you know, do work in law enforcement. This is going to be very second nature for them. They're trained to always be observing the crowd and looking for suspicious people. So a person who is very efficient and astute when it comes to situational awareness is going to have good sensory processing. So they're going to be able to see what's happening in the environment instantly and make small predictions on the basis of that. But they're also going to have good street smart because sometimes no matter how good you are at assessing a situation from a information processing standpoint, if you don't know the cultural mannerisms and the nuances of criminal behavior within your culture, then you are definitely going to be at a disadvantage. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't go out to a concert or you shouldn't take any social risks whatsoever. Just saying we all know that there is those risks in place. And I would hope that this talk today just refreshed for people the importance of watching your six out there. Because we live in a world right now where it's becoming very taboo to watch your six, to watch your own back. That's supposed to be the job of police and private security, self-driving cars, and every other mechanism by which we've offloaded our own responsibility for personal safety onto the grid. But avoid a small-scale SHTF scenario in your own life. Be aware. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you found this video helpful. I hope that it keeps you safe out there. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. 
premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.